Honestly, I'm having trouble getting it up. Try from the other direction. All right, is that working? Yeah, we got it. Okay, perfect. Uh, so today's code item of the week is strive to maintain a positive and professional image of ECI to our employees, our clients, vendors, subcontractors, and the public. Ben, do you have anything to add on to that? I think of this one as a way to exhibit pride in ourselves and pride in the company. That's a, When we maintain this positive and professional image, that, that's just a way that we can show pride about what we do. <clears throat> Perfect. All right, so an important reminder, um, attendance for last week's meeting was pretty bad. Um, there were a lot of foremen that received credit for the meeting, but their crew didn't. So make sure that you submit attendance um, if you watch in a group setting and bill the time to job number six training, which I believe is oh eight oh nine yeah and one one important thing um tom is that there are many things that we do that are required for us to communicate to our employees and sometimes when people ask for the backup like the state of vermont some of the contracts hey did you did you talk about this and who did you tell that's what we, we uh sometimes have to submit our attendance reports on certain meetings <clears throat> And if you're not there, then all of a sudden we have to go backwards and retrain you. <laughs> Point Ben. Yeah. So if you don't want to be retrained, make sure your <laughs> name is on this list. <laughs> I set that one up for Ken. I saw him grinning. I knew what he was going to say. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I think a lot of it's just a communication thing. So, especially today, if you could send the attendance to either Austin or myself, um, we'll get it all worked out because Matt's on vacation today. So. And also today's March 1st, and today we're going to talk about job hazard assessments. I believe it's already March. Uh, so our objectives of the JHA process are to maintain communication between the workers, um, all the workers, uh, stop, think, and observe all the hazards that might be on site, uh, put the daily plan in writing right. um, for both the workers and the visitors to understand. Uh, you want to draw attention to the less ha uh, obvious hazards that you might not see uh, when you first take a look at a job site. Uh, it'll establish everything that you need to wear for PPE, and it might make you think about any engineering controls that you might need as well. Um, and it'll give make it, and you should have an engaging conversation uh, about all the work that you have planned and any hazards that might arise. The first step is to stop, think, and observe. So you want to kind of get a 360 view of this job site, walk around, look up, look down, look for any dig safe marks, overhead hazards. Um, and you want to visualize and think about in your head, okay, what could go wrong? Um, and then think of ways to alleviate those potentials that could go wrong. Uh, you want to put together your daily plan, the daily plan, it uh, needs to include all the tasks we perform throughout the day. Um, if you can, we really want to see people laying out who's going to be doing what tasks, um, what subcontractors are going to be on site doing what. And you want somebody to be able to show up, read the, or not even necessarily show up, but look at your daily plan on your JHA and know exactly what you're doing that day. So it should draw a pretty good picture. um of what's going on on site and you need to keep it up to date with changing conditions if you have a major setback on site and you need to completely restructure what you're doing for the day um, you should reflect that in your jha so we're going to do kind of good better best with this um so this is one that we see a lot um and you can kind of tell what's going on and it's not quite where we want to be though so uh daily plan dig trench place box repair force main backfill cleanup prep for asphalt so it kind of lists out the steps that are going to happen 
but we don't know who's going to be performing those tasks and when they'll be performing them. So we want to make them a little bit better. I wrote that one out myself because it's pretty similar to what we see a lot of. These two I pulled from JHAs on sites this past week, and I thought they were both much better. Um, so this was, anybody can figure it out based on whose names are on them, but uh, this first one was Middlebury. Um, so they said install fence under drain and fence posts on north side of substation. Negley and Chase and White Ridge are here to work on the control building side panels. Reset will be here briefly to install a small section of grounding grid so ECI can continue con installing infrastructure along fence line. Uh, Velco working temporary sub. So that's tell them what I like about that is it talks about all the different subcontractors that are going to be in and out, and you can kind of get a good visual of who's going to be where inside the site. The next one, what I really like about the next one is that it talks about who specifically on the crew is going to be doing what tasks with what equipment throughout the day. So this was uh, Jesse, I believe, wrote this up in uh, St. Albans. Uh, so today we'll be continuing to dig for footings at the salt shed. Scott will be running the 380 and Landon will be running the 300 haul truck. All material that will be dug up will go to the berm that we are installing along the parking lot. Paul S. Uh, we'll be running the 135 shape in the berm. Sten will be working on raking and getting the stone in. We will be using three-quarter stone, and we'll be putting in eight inches. So we know exactly what's going to be going on on site and who's going to be doing it. So that's I'd, for these, this is the level of detail that we'd like to see for most JHAs on most job sites. Um, and I'd say for using a tablet and stuff like that, this is pretty much the gold standard of what we can hope for and the next one is on some job sites you're going to have to kind of go for the the gold standard um so this is more your ones that you might make out on a laptop or something like this so this is one uh from ethan over at global and you can see it lays down exactly what time everything's happening wow. sites all of our different practices and all that sort of stuff and uh i'm not going to read it but you guys can see it up on the screen so some job sites might require this level of detail, but obviously you're not going to get that on a uh, tablet every morning unless you have to. So uh, you'll establish all the PPE requirements for the day. Can you guys see that? Kind of hard to see on my screen. Yep. Um, but you'll establish all the PPE. So you want to think about all the hazards that you might have um, and select what's needed. Uh, so High-vis clothing is going to be a given, hard hat, um, stuff like that. Steel toe boots, if you check it, that means that you're requiring it on your job site. So think about, is this something that we want to require? If it is, give it a check and then make sure that all your workers understand that. And it's also going to make you think about hazards that you might not see when you first show up. So potential energy, stuff like that. Uh, when you're checking the boxes, make sure that you're not just checking boxes if you get what i'm saying you do you want to check boxes because you have to check boxes but you don't want to just be checking a box for the yeah and you want to you want to do what you said you're you need right you want you <laughs> right don't just say that everybody needs to wear every single thing of ppe on there and then they have nothing not required of your workers so. <clears throat> excuse me um you want to have an engaging meeting about it and i think this is the most important part of the whole process so you've thought everything out and if you made the jha whether whoever you might be on the job site if you made out the jha and you don't communicate it to everybody else on site then the whole process is kind of doesn't accomplish anything um so at this point you have a big meeting with everybody at the start of the day. All the team members need to voice their concerns and any contributions they might have to the JHA. Um, if conditions change, consider another discussion and involve newer workers in the delivery of information. And one thing that's been uh, suggested in the past is having newer workers involved in the JHA process with the crew leader or operating foreman or whoever is doing the JHA and ask them, hey, we're going to be doing this this and this what do you think that we should wear for ppe for this and you can kind of guide them through and it'll create a discussion while you're creating the jha and then also it'll help get them engaged in the process of the discussion so and finally brief your drivers and your visitors um 
you got to remember that a driver or visitor won't know what's going on on site until they show up unless they've been there every day uh, which isn't usually the case so uh, make sure to just give them a briefing whether you're jumping up on the truck and just kind of telling them what's going on or better yet they get out of the truck and you kind of show them around the job site when they show up for the day just kind of explain what's going on where who's going to be where what's going just the whole big picture um, where the utilities might be overhead uh, any hazards they might run into soft ground stuff like that where where it will be and that that's going to help alleviate stuff in uh, terms of what could happen with trucks and I think that breakdown in communication has been a problem that we've had in the past um, so yeah you want to tell them any hazards they might have and make a plan for spotting the drivers and you want to have a plan of I will be responsible for spotting you in this situation so just honk and I'll come running over kind of so it's a kind of uh, communication and then that way somebody's responsible for coming over to help them so that wraps it up for our end of things so I'm going to stop sharing okay perfect thank you any questions out there I have a question what do you got is it possible to use voice recognition recording software or something to try to especially on a more detailed Okay, you know, assignment. Okay, Tom, you're running X Fader. Austin, you're uh, you're, you know, grading out with a rake. Tommy, you're watching, and Ben, you're <laughs> you're managing the project. I mean, it, that kind of it seems like what you are proposing can take a lot of effort that could be made simpler and at the same time yep. being presented to the crew at the same time. You know, so that it is including the discussion rather than putting it just in writing everyone getting through a lot of detailed stuff would have challenges kind of putting it all together without really focusing uh yeah i don't have a tablet myself so i wouldn't be able to tell you that right this second but i will uh get my hands on a tablet and see if i can make that work with text to speech or something like that i know there's apps out there that you can do it and just copy and yeah. paste or something like that so i think yeah, some of the guys make... have done that ken i think some of the guys yeah. have done that yeah that makes more of an interactive thing yeah obviously it's hard for someone to tech or to write and have you know the whole crew listening at the same time all right good well thank you let's see i will share my screen Hey, we got it. We see it. Okay, hey, good. Good. Announcements. So, Ben, you got an announcement. We'll start with you uh, for the yeah. leadership training. Yeah, we had some leadership and, commu and communication training for several of the uh, foremen and supervisors. You know who you are. Uh, Gina ended up changing the schedule that was going to be from two to four today and it's being going to be rescheduled for friday march 29th sometime in the morning i don't know if they have it pinned down um what time but if you're in that catamount consulting training today it's been canceled and moved to another date due to lack of uh availability for some of the crew um and and just a side note that training is all about helping <clears throat> to increase our employee engagement and communication and consequently it'll build us a stronger team and it when i was listening to tom's um, safety topic this morning it's all about that ability to communicate and sometimes some of our best performing people are, have the hardest time with the communication part because they're so geared to get work done so many people ask about it if you want to get into that training we're doing this as a pilot program um, with catamount and we will have more sessions moving forward in the future because i think communication and and you can call it leadership training uh is very important to building our culture so i probably gave you a, a longer uh answer ken than you wanted but no, that's fine I, uh, it, yeah i wanted people to know what it was <clears throat> it just 
makes me think, you know, part leadership is a lot of communication, like you say. And I think of, you know, you think of a leader, you think of a military commanding officer addressing his troops, telling them what each group is going to do and how they're going to work together. And yep. a lot of it is just stating the very obvious things. Right. And, and asking the dumb stay. question, Ken. <laughs> What's that? Ask the dumb question. The question you think is dumb, just ask it. And then everyone will look at each other and go, oh, damn. Yeah. Oh, you just asked what we're all thinking. <laughs> right. So, so really, <sighs> yeah. Leadership is some, a lot of the time is stating the obvious and yep. presenting the obvious points to everybody. So everyone's thinking and aligned, but also not just aligned, but also has their heads tuned in the same way. So yep. that's what I get to say. And Agreed. I'll move on. Thank you, Ken. All right. So let's see. I repeated this uh, announcement from last week. The uh, representative from Morgan Stanley Financial Advisor will be at ECI today. So if you have a, a meeting scheduled, don't forget. There, I don't know. I, there could be some more meetings available, times available, time slots. I'm not sure. And the other thing here I have it I mentioned last week but didn't put in the uh, text is that we have the vehicle insurance cards are in. I said last week, see Sarah, but I see Sarah says, see Chico, Pat Wells, or Scott Burns. So make sure you get those because, uh, you know, obviously it's kind of essential, just like your registration to have that insurance card. And I carried this one from several weeks already, but I, it's a very important one for announcement. And I want to continue to, get it out there in case people haven't done it. We always, all of us always struggle to take care of these kind of fine details that it can be really important to make sure your life insurance and 401k beneficiary forms are updated and complete. When it's too late, it's, it's a mess. So get on it. And then, oops, went a little too far. The, uh, this is from last week as well. This is the, about the ECI Health Savings Account Program. So this is a, a great little benefit if you're part of the health care program. It allows you to uh, put money aside for health-related items that you might encounter now or way in the future even. It, it holds, you know, into a, stays in an account tax-free dollars on your own uh, contributions, and ECI contributes uh, a little amount every week too, which can add up. And there's a list of qualified medical expenses related to that. This week we have new one new employee. This is Colby uh, Bruesi. Bruzi. Bruzi. Is that how you pronounce the name? Do you know? Is Colby out there? Or someone working with Colby? Can I... He yeah, told me uh, Bruzy. Uh, your okay. second attempt was good. He's he's also related to Joe DiMartino, who was a longtime employee of ECI. Oh. Great uncle, I think, or yeah. something like that. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Oh, welcome, Colby. I shortened up the uh, the email here on the ECI children's size sweatshirts. I really wanted to show the, the adorable little uh, folks there, future ECI employees again, but I thought it was time to start phasing that out. But I want to remind everybody again, you can you can buy a sweatshirt, check with Sarah, all the proceeds benefit the Make-A-Wish charity for this year. We have a link to the ECI Primary Care Wellness Program. And now we're going to talk for the project of the week. Tom Lawyer is going to present on the sewer sleeve under the MBTA tracks in Lemonster, Mass. So we recently completed, Tom? Yeah, just recently completed. I think it was Wednesday of this week. So Ken, if you want to scroll, I probably won't sure. follow this okay. text exactly, but ECI was hired by a Blue Diamond Equipment, the the uh, Mahoney brothers, if you will. Um, they proved to be a great um, contractor for us. They're extremely well organized, proactive, prepared in every way, which when you're going out of town on these jobs, we, we put a lot of effort into trying to communicate the proper setup so when we get there, we don't lose time, and these guys hit it out of the park. So it was a um, nice work uh, and a credit to those folks for sure. The project was pretty straightforward relative to um, scope of work for ECI. It was a 42-inch by 90-foot uh, grade-sensitive um, 
the contract was initially designed as a um, an auger bore. We got in almost immediately in counter rock, and with a little discussion, we paused and uh, switched to to pipe ramming, which allowed us to to absorb um, some of that rock. Uh, completely absorbed that rock and there's a nice picture of it uh, when we get down further we were working under this says mbta and it was actually pan am that was uh was uh, overseeing that that area of the tracks but it okay. did have the mbta yeah used exactly exactly similar to um it's like amtrak the um but the specification did require continuous round the clock work once we got into the rail sensitive zone and our and our crews, as you know, here put in a 24 and a half hour shift. And and while we're on safety um, to the crews who were there, that great work, um, we allocated time the next day to sleep in and get a break break before you drive drive home. So thanks to everybody for uh, for taking advantage of that, because jumping off a 25 hour shift, getting in a car and driving homes probably not the best thing to do so so thanks for that um the project really you can start scrolling down if you like ken but this project yep. was really uh about 50 percent welding and 50 percent trenchless and it it showed um amazing teamwork on behalf of of eci and how we how we approach projects as a team and we see it all the time and it, it's really refreshing ben mckinney and his team it between this, we had another project going on simultaneously with some 48-inch casing that we'll we'll probably report on in the coming weeks. But they they set us up. We had uh, Pat Wells, Lee Brown, Jason was down there, Dale was down there, Logan Coles, uh, Mike Wright, his team um, intermix labor as needed out of Exeter. So the teamwork that was was on this project um, is exactly what ECI is all about for sure. So so here, this first picture we're setting looks like the first casing getting ready to go and you can see what I'm talking about on the support. If you look at the front of this pit here, the the welder's pit on the bottom left, uh, even that was framed in and they just did a really nice job getting this pit set up. If you wanna go to the second one, Ken. Second picture. So here we are setting. You don't wanna over -school. That's all right. <laughs> so here's the guys uh, setting in the uh, the segment. So we have a segmented collar cone that goes in the pipe, depending upon the diameters. But it it leaves a lot of um, space so that they don't jam in. Like in our and some of our other our other hammer, use a single piece cone here, and they can be a bear. Almost always need to torch them to get them out. So this is a nice uh, design here. But they go in. They're they're finger pinchers for sure. But they they send us with these special lifting gears, and you'll see clamps uh, in one of the coming pictures. The clamps are right there on the bottom right. Those blue clamps that hold them in place while we're setting the hammer. Okay, scroll down. So, This is this is further setting. So now we've got uh, the clamps are in place and our cone is in place. And then we from there we'll go to the next picture and you see the hammers all seated and tied in. And and uh, we saw really when we got into the rock, we obviously had to deal with that. But the advance rates here were, were pretty good. We were seeing, uh, you know, six, seven feet an hour in some cases. So it uh, it was a pretty good project, pretty good soils other than a couple of spots where we encountered rock. Next one down. So this is after we've driven a casing, uh, dismantling the hammer. Usually those hammers, they don't require a back abutment. We chain them in for to get them set and and um, for safety reasons as well. They maintain um, the chains during the the drive. But um, you'll see here this excavator probably knocked it loose just to just to break the break the connection because they seat in there really well. Here's some of the welding. It looks like Dale. And I'm not sure who that is. Um, like I said, we had four different welders down there, but these guys did a, just an amazing job. How long does it take to do a 42-inch weld? Full they were doing them. Pat reported to me, and Pat, if you're out there, you can correct me, but I think he was telling me we were seeing three-hour weld cycles with two welders. And how thick is the casing? This was 0.875. Oh, on this wow. one so yeah no it was a it was i'm not really sure you know in this case the city of lemonster chose to procure the casing themselves and oh. i'm not sure we didn't need that large of a casing i don't believe they needed it but i'm not so sure they just didn't get a deal on it and went that way but because that was it was fine but oh. but it was heavy casing for sure yep next next slide down this is a good picture of the welders pit i was talking about and the welders who've got to be upside down 
under these casings, putting a root pass in and completing the weld. Uh, you know, we've seen some of these welders pits where they just dig a bucket of dirt out of the way. They just, it's it's unacceptable sometimes, but these guys, again, they did a super job setting this up. Yeah, good little setup. Yep, no, absolutely. That, this is a, such a critical little piece of the work. It's amazing right. how the devil's in the details. So here, I love this picture because it shows the ECI colors, <laughs> showing the showing the uh, the pink shirt. So proud of that. Um, here, we're just getting ready to clean this casing out. So after we drive, we remove the hammer, put the auger into position, and we'll clean these these uh, casings out that way. And that's so that's the next probably picture. Full length there. So you, yeah. you're you're cleaning out after each casing in this case, or are you after? It, in this one, we you know we had rock at 15 feet, and then rocking at 50 feet, so we had to do a partial clean out to get to that refusal and remove it. Um, but the decision on that changes on on a case to case basis depending upon our advance rate. Sometimes we'll drive an entire casing if we're in looser soils, and right. it's just if we're getting good advance rates, we'll just drive the whole thing and clean it out at the end. Sometimes if we get into something that's holding us up, um, you know, we'll do a we'll remove part of the. the the uh, spoils. Right, this looks like it didn't hold the, you know, a plug at the front. The soil kind of pushed right to the. Well, if you go back a couple pictures, there's a there's a um, soil removal cone. You see yeah. right here. Oh, okay, we're, that's, we're that's pushing in. Yeah, okay. yeah. So th it has relief ports on both, you know, and two spots here. So right. depending again, again how the soil reacts, that can it'll it'll relieve itself. So that that helps. Um, with our advance rates as well, but here it didn't do much because it's it's all right there as you say as a plug. So yeah, okay. I'm gonna go to the next one down. I'm guessing right here that Pat was probably monitoring um, advance rates because he he was he was uh, really good with those with those details and information. So. Yeah. Okay. And this is the fault. This was earlier this week when we went in to clean it out, and we almost immediately got into to rock, um, which meant partial clean out, climb in, pull it out. And um, I think Tuesday morning, Brian Coda called me up, said we might be here all week long. <laughs> we were seeing some rock, and and as soon as he made that call, if you go to the next one, next next photo down, I think you'll see this rock that um, we had a, some of these rocks. So they went in cord put an anchor in these rocks and pulled it out with chains. And actually, after Brian made that call, a few hours later, he called and said, we're all done. So we got out of the <laughs> rock and they sailed right through it. It was great. So worked yeah. out perfect. So uh, yeah, it was a good yeah. job overall. And the, and the yeah. ECI teamwork was really the solid message there. And the, the well, it was half welding job, half trenchless job. So. Yeah, good, yeah, good job. Thank you, Tom. And from the project uh, photo archives, we have Michael Colby on an auger bore. Uh, actually, I was going to change that date. I think it might be closer to 2001. I couldn't really find the actual date that the photo had been altered, so the photo, uh, the the stamp date stamp on it wasn't wasn't uh, accurate. There's no actual stamp on the photo, so that could that's be 98, Michael. Ken. That could be 98. That could be the chilled water lines under the links. We put could those be. in in 98. Maybe we put the was. chilled water line just, sleeves. I saw something about 2001 on the on one of the photos related yeah. to it i couldn't we really did. tell it was hard yep. these old cameras these old digital cameras were terrible in a lot of ways I took but that that's picture. michael <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so good all right thank you everybody i'll turn it back over to uh tom and austin to close out the meeting Yep, so make sure uh, if you watch in a group setting that you're sending attendance uh, to either Austin or myself. Uh, have a safe day, have a great weekend, and uh, we'll see you guys next week. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Austin. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, everybody. All righty, bye.